Hi, greetings, fellow hunters. We want to look at Supernatural Season 1. That continues on with the episode, Shadow. In Chicago, Illinois, a young girl, Meredith, is walking through the streets and enters a deserted alley. Her iPod goes dead and a wind kicks up. She freaks out and starts to run as a shadowy figure appears behind her. She gets to her apartment and locks herself in, setting the alarm system. She starts to get comfortable when the shadow enters her house, creeps up behind her, and rips through her chest. Ugh. One week later, Dean and Sam show up dressed as security alarm repairmen to investigate the murder. The second one in two months. A landlady provides some information on how the place was locked up when the alarm was still on and how Meredith was cut up into pieces. Sam thinks it's their kind of gig and Dean picks a BMF. Dean has also checked with the police and found out Meredith's heart was missing. They suspect a spirit and Dean manages to light a symbol with masking tape from the carpet. A symbol they don't recognize. Later at the bar where Meredith worked, Dean and Sam compare notes. The two victims have nothing in common as far as they can tell. They are interrupted by Sam spots Meg, the girly man scarecrow. She talks about how she didn't make it to California and ended up in Chicago. She's unimpressed with Dean, berating him for dragging Sam around the country, but Sam covers. Sam gets her number where they agree to meet later. But after they leave, Sam is suspicious and Dean is upset. Sam insists there's something up with her. It's too coincidental. He watches her while Dean goes to check up on her history and research the symbol. Later, they touch base and Dean determines it's a Zoroastrian symbol which represents a demon of darkness, a deva, which has to be conjured by an experienced sorcerer. However, Meg's history shows she's clean. After Meg leaves her apartment and enters an abandoned factory, Sam's taken by climbing up the freight elevator. He, goes, he gets to the top just as she returns and sees her conduct a ceremony with a silver goblet and an altar. She speaks to someone warning that the brothers are in town and is told to wait for the entity at the other end. After she leaves, Sam enters the room and finds the altar with a Zoroastrian symbol. Sam compares notes with Dean and brings him up to speed. Dean reveals there was a connection between the two victims. They are both from Lawrence, Kansas, where the brothers are also from. Dean figures they need help and leaves a message for their father. As they prepare to head out, they discuss what they might do after destroying the demon responsible for their history. After some tension, Dean says Sam needs to go off after it's over, but for him it'll never be over. Dean confesses that he wants them all three to be together as a family. Sam warns that when it's over, Dean will have to let him go his own way. At the factory, the brothers, the brothers climb up the elevator again as Meek prepares her ceremony. They sneak in, but she cheerfully calls out to them and invites them in. She says she was waiting for Sam, and then the diva strikes, knocking them both unconscious. They wake up, they wake up and Sam concludes the whole thing was a trap to lure them in. But Meg reveals it was a trap to bring in their father. She knows they're going to rescue his boys and that the room was filled with devas. She, come on, she comes on to Sam and starts to respond, but Meg catches on this distraction for Dean to free himself and confronts Dean. But that's a distraction for Sam to come himself free with his own knife. He knocks Meg down and destroys the altar, and the devas appear and haul Meg out a window where she falls to her death. They go back to her hotel room, where their father is waiting for them. Bum bum bum. They have a brief reunion and John reveals he knows about the demon that and knows he'll kill it, but he has to do it alone for now. He explains that he plans to actually kill the demon, not just exercise it like hunters do to all demons, though he doesn't know how he'll kill a demon yet. They share a hug, but then the diva strike, attacking them all. Meg is shown to be nearby, alive and uninjured, and has an amulet she uses to control the devas. The family sick us from death when Sam manages to grab a, a bright flare and dispel the devas. They stagger out into the street, where Dean insists that John leave them because he's vulnerable with them around. John and, John and finally Sam reluctantly agree that they part. As they leave, Meg sees them go. Aww, we were so close to having a reunion for once! <sighs> so anyway, let's take a look at some continuity for starting this episode. Joan Chester previously appeared as Scarecrow. Meg also previously appeared in Scarecrow. <laughs> and now finally on some trivia surrounding this episode. Sam and Meg meet again. Last day they met was in Scarecrow. Dean went sandwiches this to Dean in the episode itself. This is the first time werewolves and their hunger for human hearts is mentioned, although actual werewolves won't appear until the next season. Sam and Dean reunite with their father. John reveals he plans to kill the demon, though he doesn't know how to kill a demon yet as hunters only exercise them. This is the first mention of the idea that a demon could be killed on this series, 
Something that's later proven to be possible and is done much more often than an exorcism. There was an inside joke and Mig mentions she met something Michael Murray and Sam answers, who? In real, in real life, Jared Padalec and Chad Michael Murray know each other and work together on a set of Gilmore Girls. They're even good friends to date. This is the last episode to air Tuesday nights on the WB. When, Sam talk, when Dean talks with Sam on the phone, he tells him that, that the Zoroastrian symbol they found was from around 2,000 years before Christ. In reality, Zoroastrianism was founded just some time before the 6th century BCE. Just before the death of Meredith, on her voicemail, a friend of hers says something along the lines of, I know the last guy ripped at your heart, right before the shadow ripped Meredith's heart out. The CW's official summary has an error where actor Jeffrey D. Morgan is not credited as a guest star. Huh. So overall, I say this is a pretty good episode of the show, and I like the fact that John Winchester was finally brought back in after we saw him after who knows how many episodes, so there you go. So overall, I give the episode Shadow three angel blades out of five. When I tune tomorrow, we take a look at Hell House. So until then, carry on my wayward sons and daughters.